Hello, this is Christy. Welcome to the new episode of Zara Designer Pro X. This is part of a series of tutorials I'm doing on Zara Designer Pro. And if you want to call it a course, fine. You can call it a course, although it is free on my YouTube channel. So I have Zara Designer Pro X. If you haven't seen my, if you haven't watched my first episode, I showed a interface overview of the Zara program. And today we will look at the first tool in Zara and it's called the selector tool. So this is going to be actually an introduction on how objects work in Zara. So we will cover that as well. The selector tool can be used to select any object on your document, on your page, and you can move it and drag it and rotate it and resize it and arrange them and so on. So we will look at this. So this is a blank document here. I have a page and I'm going to just draw a uh, rectangle here on the page and I'm going to just type some text as well. This is text. Let me make this larger by, you know, clicking on the uh, handles and changing its color to maybe this color, right? So let's make this another color, maybe orange like that. Okay, so I have two objects on my page. Then you can uh, use the selector tool. This one, um, the selector tool, you press the key V or you find it on the toolbar here, the first toolbar. So with this tool, it allows you to click on an object. You can see these handles showing up around your object. So these are the resize handles. So if I want to resize my object, let me just zoom in a bit here. If I want to resize this object, um, I can drag these handles like that you know, left and right. If I drag the corner handles, my object will be re resized proportionally. If I drag the side handles, it will obviously be elongating it or, uh, you know, distorting my objects. Okay, if you press the shift key while you resize, it will uh, do it around the center of the object. So the object will be centered uh, to your to its current center and then just resize it like that. You can also change the sizes of objects and um, other things using this info bar, which I told you before about its changes here with every tool that you select. So if I have the selector tool here, then this bar applies all of these options here apply to this particular tool. If I change the tool, as you can see, the info bar is changing. So if I have the selector tool here, I can click on an object and then you have all of these fields you can fill in. So if I want to resize the object at the moment, it's telling me it's 945 centimeters wide by 594 centimeters. Obviously, if I type a new value in here, I, let's say I want to make this one uh, like half the size, 4.5 centimeters, right? So I'm going to just type 4.5, press enter. You see that the other size has changed as well. So it's using them, uh, it's resizing it proportionally because this lock icon is pressed down to lock the aspect ratio. If I want to distort my object and I want to make it a very accurate um, dimension um, on both sides, then I have to take this off. All right. So let's say that I want to take this particular uh, rectangle and turn it into an HD, a screen HD size. So that is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels, right? Obviously now I have centimeters here, so that's not very helpful. So if I take the lock off, take the lock aspect ratio off, I can actually type in here 1920 and PX, which I'm telling Zara, I want to actually express this dimension in pixels. Press enter and that has been um, resized. Now, of course, it's saying 50.8 centimeters, which is not very helpful. So if you want to work in pixels, let me just um, make a little bit of a side note here. If you want to change the units that Zara is using to express dimensions and things like that, you can actually uh, go to the um, utilities menu and go to options. And here you have a tab called units. Click on this tab and you see that the page units are centimeters by default and the font unit are fonts, points. Now, if I want to use uh, pixels in my situation here, I want to make uh, I want to make my pixels the main unit for this particular document. So this applies just to this document. I'm going to uh, select pixels here and click apply. So now watch what happened. If I click on my object again, I am actually seeing 1920 PX here, which is what I typed before. Now, what about the other size? Because I took the lock aspect ratio option off. So I want to type here 1080. 
because that's and because I have already changed the unit Zara knows that if I don't provide a unit in this box it will use the one that's been defined for the document in which case it is now pixel px so press enter and that's 1080 px as you can see so my document now my object has the size of HD that I wanted to have like if I want to design an HD thumbnail for a YouTube video or something like that you can also design you can also resize things in percentages so once you're done resizing objects in that in that way you need to turn on the lock because if not then um, you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time uh, resizing objects first of all that's not gonna work here with this text object anymore uh, you can see it's resizing the sort of container of the text right and not the text itself but secondly I can uh, by mistake I can uh, change my object now so I've done all that work for no reason because I've lost it now so click undo and when you're done resizing whatever click on the lock icon again and then you're resizing things you're not breaking your aspect ratio by mistake okay so that was the resizing of objects uh, with uh, Zara and with units and still since we're still on the selector tool let me show you another thing so another thing you can do is rotate objects now if you look at the uh, bar of course you have rotation here but who wants to type numbers in degrees like 15 degrees like that okay no I don't want to do that I want to just free free transform my object so in that case you have the selection tool click once on your object and that gives you the resize handles you see these uh, square um, black squares right for resizing but if I click again on my object it changes to rotation handles so you can rotate from the corner or if you want to skew your object which means you know kind of slant it then you can use these ones from the middle of the side so like that okay so um, let's see rotating so you can go to either one of these and just click and drag so you can see I am rotating my object like this in any situ any uh, direction doesn't matter if you look in the bar you can see the number of degrees changing minus or plus okay and then if you want to skew your object you can drag these handles so I'm gonna skew it like this sideways see you can deform your object sideways or up and down like that okay so this is what happens when you rotate your um, object let me delete this object for a second here and I'm gonna create a triangle here we go and another nice way about nice thing about resizing is, uh, rotating is that you can actually change the rotation point so let me zoom in a bit I'm gonna make this a uh, different color maybe blue and if you click once with the selection tool of course you have the resize handles click again you have the rotation handles but you notice this little center um, center selection here this uh, cross pin here that shows the center of the object and by default when you create a new document a new object on the, your uh, on your page it will have the rotation center in the uh, sort of geometrical whatever center of the object is but let's say that I want to actually rotate this object um, around one of the corners one of the points here right so you, all you do is just drag take this selection center um, rotation center and move it to your point here right it snapped into place so watch what happens now if I rotate my object will rotate around that point yeah if I want to change this to the middle of the the middle of the line here and I rotate the object will gravitate around that particular point so that is very useful if you're if you want to make per, uh, precise rotations around a particular point in your object okay so that's what it is click on to resize click again to rotate and click to resize again so like that okay now this is this is the selection tool and um, what you can do is uh, if you have multiple objects let me just duplicate this and make it a different color you can see that when you're moving things around in Zara it will try and give you a little bit of a guide as to where your object is in relation to the other objects on your scene right so if I if I rotate this a bit like like that okay you notice that if I slide it down 
you see that line it shows me that my object is currently perfectly aligned at the bottom end with the other object if I move a bit up it is at the top now if I if I make it a bit smaller now just to show you something um, there it is that's the middle of it so you can see the line keeps showing up these are uh, I think these are called smart guides and they show you um, you know if you're trying to quickly kind of freestyle things but you still want to stay aligned you still want to kind of keep a little bit of a uh, alignment and proportion and stuff like that then this this helps you because all these lines kind of give you little hints as to where you are with your object right okay so moving on the selection tool also allows you let's say if you want to select one object you click on it click on the other one but if you want to select another object together so the the, first, the easiest thing to do is just if you want to select both of these just click and drag around these objects so you can see the selection um, red rectangle it will select everything that it encompasses so everything that's inside of this will be selected now right so see the handles to resize are around both of my objects although these objects have not been grouped I haven't grouped them so I still I can still resize them together because they have been both selected together right and click again on them and then you can resize ro rotate them like that yeah okay another way to select multiple objects is of course you hold down the shift key so I click on the first object press the shift key click on the second object and then there you go I selected both of them if I want the objects to actually always stay together then I need to group them select both of them and right click and you can actually say group or control G right so grouping them now means they are a group so every time I click on either of them both of them will be selected and they will always be resized and rotated together because they belong in a group if I want to ungroup them and separate them right click and say ungroup okay so that is uh, basics of grouping and ungrouping objects uh, another thing is to arrange right on on your page you can see that the uh, purple kind of triangle is on top of the blue one right so what about if I want to put the blue one on top of the other one click on the blue one right click on the menu and you can say arrange and you have a range of options here you can say bring to front which will bring the object to the top of the pile move forward or backwards so if you have multiple objects you can uh, kind of move your object up one level down one level and so on but if you just want it to be to the front bring to front and now this object is on the top on top of the other object this is different from layers so just a side note here if in your page and layer gallery if you open this uh, let me just snap that in place so you can see that my page has layer one okay and both of these objects are on this layer so this kind of works a little different than Photoshop like I mentioned before you do have layers in Photoshop but in, in Photoshop on the layers you can only have one layer with one thing and then that's it it's part of the same layer you, you can't do much about it but in Zara because the objects are vectors most mostly vectors and then they can be um, individually manipulated on the same layer so if I open this branch here with the layer I can see both of my shapes which are you know my quick shapes and my text line which I forgot about it's down it's up here okay they all of these all of three uh, objects are on this layer right so now watch what happens if I take the text the text is on uh, on the bottom sort of on the pile right it's not on a different layer it's on the same layer but it is at the bottom so I cannot see through now if I right click on my text and I say arrange bring to front see what happens in the layer gallery the text now appears at the at the top so this is another way to move things up and down you just click on the object and if I want to put this text behind the blue triangle but still on top of the purple one I can just drag click and drag here and put it between like that so this allows you to arrange the objects in the same within the same layer if I create another layer and this is not I didn't want to get into layers right now but if you want to get into layers um, you create another layer then the our order of objects will be dictated by where the layer is so as you can see now my uh, my 
purple triangle, I'm going to move it to the other layer. And although I did put my text on top of it, but because now the layer that contains that triangle is on top, it will circumvent all of this order from the second, the first layer, right? So um, you need to kind of get used to this, but it's not very hard to understand um, because layers um, overtake the um, individual stack in each layer with the objects. Okay, so the selection tool, again, select everything, move it around. When you do that, it works even on multiple layers, as long as the layer is not locked. Okay, so if I if I take layer three, for example, and I lock it, you can lock a layer to protect it from making changes accidentally to it. If you want it to stay in place, you can lock it. And then watch what I'm doing. I'm, I'm selecting all objects, but actually I can only select these two that are on the layer that's not locked. Okay, if I lock this layer as well, uh, then um, I'm, I'm locking the layer two. There's no more changes I can make. I can select all I want and I click all I want. The objects will stay in position, right? So this is this is a bit of a side note with selecting things across layers and all of that. Let me unlock my layers again. You can of course lock individual objects. So if you want this text to be uh, protected, you can just click on it and say lock. And then you cannot you cannot move this object at all. Okay, so you can select around it. This is very useful if you're creating like a document that you uh, load a sketch or a bitmap or a photo of a sketch and you want to kind of draw on top of it and you don't want to move that sketch by accident. You put it on a different layer or you put it on the bottom of the pile and you lock it. Okay, you can even change the transparency before you lock it. So let's say uh, that I'm unlocking my text here and I'm going to make this text very faint gray and I'm going to make this a very faint, um, very faint gray and I'm going to remove the fill and make it a very thin outline. I said thin. Okay. Right. All right. And now I can actually make this uh, a bit transparent. So use the transparency tool, fade it out. I can barely see it now and I can lock it. OK, so now I can zoom in and out and draw around it and do whatever I want. And it's going to be protected and I can't move it around. So that is very nice. Uh, you can use the locking and I'm going to use I'm going to do this again in another tutorial, just talking about the layers. But the selection tool, you know, it, it's very flexible. It allows you to kind of touch stuff around and move it around and resize it, scale it, reorder it, group it, ungroup it and all of that. And uh, I'm not going to go into details about combining objects and so on. But you can flip objects using this uh, tool here, flip horizontally, flip vertically. Um, you can do all sorts of transforms. So the selection tool, the key V. Thank you for watching. I'm going to stop here because this tutorial is quite long. So this is the selection tool, how to select objects, how to move them around in Zara Designer Pro. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for future tutorials. And if you like this uh, video, please like it, share it, add your comment. And if you have questions, um, I'm very happy to take them and uh, answer them. Thanks for watching. See you next time.